there are two constants, the permittivity constant and permeability constants that keep coming up in electromagnetism. So let's take a look and try to explain what exactly these constants are. Also, how are they related towards the propagation of electromagnetic waves, so EM waves. So we'll talk about that as well. So first off, okay, so you will notice that you have two of these. So this one, okay, which is mu naught, is actually the permeability constants, and it is related towards okay, the magnetic field side. And then you have the permittivity constant, which is the epsilon naught, and that one is related towards the electric field, okay, kind of world. So now these two constants, are constants of nature. So we can find these out through experimentation and computation, okay, as well. So I have listed them out for you. The actual numbers themselves, if you do enough of the problems, you probably will start remembering them, but it's not necessary, okay, for us to try to understand what these concepts actually mean. So first, you have this little O, okay, right here, which you might start thinking, why did we put that? Why didn't we just put mu or epsilon within here? Well, the O actually means with regards to vacuums. So it's the permittivity within a vacuum, which means just free space, okay, so there is no matter. And then permeability, okay, with respect to a vacuum, or again, with respect to free space. So it turns out the, that electromagnetic waves, as you study them, do propagate through basically vacuums. They do not need matter, like sound does, okay, in order to propagate as a wave. And you'll learn that, okay, in a different video, okay, so you're going to be able to watch that, okay, and I'll put up a link up above there, okay, to that video if you want to know how these electromagnetic waves are actually produced. But for the moment, let's try to first explain these two and then tie it in to the propagation overall, okay, which you see here. So this is a constant C, which is very often known as the speed of light, but technically it is the speed or the propagation of an EM wave. That's what we have. And all EM waves will travel at this particular speed in a vacuum that you have. So basically in free space. And this is an exact value that we have obtained and actually kind of defined um, within here. So let's take a look and see. So first of all, okay, let's dive in and I'll start with the permittivity constant. So what in the world is this permittivity constant? So I'm going to kind of scroll down here and bring this up for us for the moment, okay, so right here. And you may recall this and you're taking a look at this and you're seeing that, oh, this looks kind of like Coulomb's law, okay, and you have two of the actual charges, so one and two, you have your radius, so how far they're apart, and then you have this constant k, and if you were learning this on the fundamental side, you probably would have seen this k. Now, you can find and define the electric field, or at least the magnitude of it, by simply whatever the charge might be, and notice that these are pretty much the same, except one of these q's disappears, and that will give you the strength of an electric field um, at a certain distance away from the charge itself. Now, technically, what you had is this k, which is really just 8.99, now it has more decimal places, times 10 k to the 9, etc. At least that's the uh, numerical result of it, actually comes from this right here. So it is equivalent to just 1 divided by 4 pi, so yes, it is the pi from the circle, and then it has this constant, which is the permittivity constant in general. So this is typically hidden when you just are starting off and learning about electricity and electric fields, okay, and then the actual forces between charges, but as you keep going on, it is worth mentioning that this k is actually made up, okay, and it looks like this. So now, what does this mean? Well, if you recall, okay, so if you're thinking about, let's say, electricity in general, and let's say circuits, right? If you recall resistance, so you had resistance, and resistance was defined as basically to, okay, the kind of resistance of flow of electrons through a circuit. So if you had more resistance, okay, so then the electrons would have a harder time to try to flow. Okay, so that's what would happen. Well, this okay, is the permittivity constant. And what it says is, it basically tells you how difficult is it to form electric fields okay, from certain charges. And that is in space, in free space. 
So with regards to that free space, you know, you might be thinking that this is kind of like a resistance that you would have to the creation of these electric fields. But notice that it does appear in the denominator. So the smaller that this is, okay, then actually the larger this would have been. Now you might think, well, isn't this K kind of fixed? It is fixed in a vacuum in free space. But if you do have a medium of some kind, let's say if it's water, even if it is air, although air is not too far away from free space, um, this constant will actually change, okay, depending on this, because this would no longer be in free space. But in free space, it is, again, just kind of like the resistance that you would have, okay, with regards to forming of electric fields. So it would be like how permissive is the, the actual space around charges to allow the uh, formation of electric fields. So how much does it permit okay, these electric fields? And the smaller it is because it's in the denominator, well then the larger, so notice that the larger that this would be. Now this is fixed in free space and we can measure it out. So we have it right here and this is the actual value or at least the approximation of the value that we have in here. Now, if you were actually trying to form electric fields, not necessarily in free space, but in some kind of a medium, you know, water, or some kind of solids, whatever it might be, then this would actually change. And this would be dependent, just like sound is dependent on whatever medium it travels through. It travels at certain speeds, for example, through just regular air, Okay. In that case, it cannot travel through free space because we do need a medium um, in those cases because the longitudinal waves do are related back to the particles that we have and then the pressures and changes in pressure. Well, in here, we have our electric fields forming and this is in free space and that's the smallest value it can take on. And then anything else, we very often will write okay, a general and this will be a combination of simply the free space one that we have in here. So we know what this is. And this, which is just the relative, this will depend on whatever medium you have. And it is a scaling. So it just scales it up depending on how hard will it be to form electric fields in it. And it will be actually experimental. So that's what we have there. Now switching over to the permeability constant. So it works in exactly the same concept. So except it's for magnetic fields. So permeability okay, would be how easily it, the space around would allow for the willingness of magnetic fields to form. And that is dependent on this permeability constant. So now the permeability constant for a vacuum, so in free space, is designated as just mu naught within here, and it is actually an exact value that we have. Now, one thing that you should note is that unlike electric fields, so the electric fields, so this is the smallest that it can be, and then, okay, if it is any other medium, it will increase. The permeability constant can be higher or lower. So it's higher because you have kind of paramagnetic um, materials, which allow Okay, and actually amplify, can amplify the actual magnetic fields that you have. And then there are uh, materials that do not, and therefore this uh, permeability could go below. But if you're talking about free space, you will sometimes run into various um, concepts okay, and formulas where this permeability will be popping up. So for the moment on free space okay, or in a vacuum, okay, this is a very well known magnetic kind of field formation formula that we have. Now you may have not run into it and that's completely okay, but I bring it up because I wanted to show you that it has certain characteristics and okay, all of these um, formulas for the magnetic field will start popping up and within it somewhere you will see okay, the actual permeability constant. So here on the left hand side, really you can just think of this as the magnetic field. You can, don't worry about the little D that we have in there. Okay, and then on the right hand side, you will notice that, oh, look at this. Okay, it reduces with respect to the actual distance. Okay, so notice it's R squared, but this also happened, okay, within here as well on the electric side. And it also happens in the gravitational uh, field side as well. If you recall, you have the two masses and then you have the distance between them squared. So this 
it seems is a very common feature of nature. Now, um, right here, the one that you should kind of think about is you have I, which just simply means the current. And if you recall, so if current is going to be flowing, there's a magnetic field that starts to form. And then, you know, you're seeing this right here, which is your permeability constant. So again, so permeability constant just tells us kind of like resistance and, you know, the flow of electrons in a circuit, you know, how permissible will it be? Okay, so how permeable a space is to magnetic fields. But notice this is in the numerator while the permittivity one was in the denominator right there. So again, this one, if this one is goes higher, right, as you're going through, then basically it allows the electric field less strength. While here, because it's in the numerator, therefore if this goes higher, and it can go higher just depending on mat what material we have, then if this goes higher within here, then that means that your magnetic field okay, would have a more or easily susceptible path to be able to form magnetic fields. And if this goes lower, then of course, okay, it has less okay, permissibility that we have. Now, just like okay, this right here, which is just a vacuum, this right here is just through a vacuum, you can have a general one, okay, which would be okay, this one right here, where this, this by the way, is a little r. Okay, r is just basically just relative, so it just starts to scale depending on what the material is. So it just is a scaling factor, there's no units associated with it, okay, and it will scale okay, the one which is your permeability constant. All right, so now with this information, so now that we have these, what is very interesting is, and where this comes in into nature, is that once you start studying electromagnetic waves and how they propagate, okay, so the speed of their propagation, you may recall that you had the speed of a wave, this is from the universal wave equation, that this was equal to simply the wavelength multiplied by the frequency. Now this is for any wave, and now it turns out, again, as you're gonna be learning about this, is that the electromagnetic waves follow this universal wave equation. And this is just simply nothing else but the speed. Well, for electromagnetic waves in a vacuum, okay, we kind of called this speed, which is this, and we've defined it with this letter C. And here it is. So we know how fast okay, it can go. And what is very interesting is that this C is actually defined as one all over, what well, it has been found, okay, to be one all over the square root of the two permittivity and permeability constant multiplied together. So that is really, really neat. So if you take these, right, and you do this calculation, this is exactly what you're going to be finding. And by the way, okay, so the permeability constant is exact valued here. And then typically the permittivity constant is actually defined with respect to, notice the little C there in the bottom, um, it is defined with respect to or defined, it's one over the permeability constant times the speed of light or the speed of an electromagnetic wave propagation squared. And then if you substitute that in, you're going to get this value. So if you're ever wondering this, okay, this value actually comes from that. All right. So this is really neat. And now what it allows us to say is that, okay, we can now talk about these electromagnetic waves. And it turns out that through a vacuum, they are propagating exactly at the same speed. Now, of course, there are no, not just unique waves. There are many electromagnetic waves, for example, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, that you have gamma rays, radio waves, etc. And they have different frequencies. And of course, they'll have, therefore, different, okay, the actual wavelengths. But when you multiply the frequency and the wavelength, you will get that the propagation, that it propagates exactly at the same speed. All right, where the speed will change is if it's no longer a vacuum and it starts to okay, go through certain materials and then sometimes okay, it will get reflected, refracted, okay, etc. All right, okay, so this is the introduction and hopefully it gives you an understanding of what these permittivity and permeability constants are. They're constants of nature, um, we have them, okay, the permittivity constant is related to the per permissive way of kind of forming electric fields. 
and the permeability one is related to magnetic fields and then how easily it is to be able to form them. All right, thanks for watching. Okay, we'll see you in a future video. Bye, everybody.